What's going on guys, Bob Roach from RoachTechnology.com here with a step-by-step -step build video of a budget Hackintosh. The total cost for this system, including the test bench that it's sitting on, came to about $520. It's important to note that a good chunk of the budget went into the test bench and that we're not using a dedicated GPU. Now getting into the hardware components that I used for this build, as you can see we have sort of an overview here and the first thing I'm going to start off with is the processor. I decided to go with the Intel Core i3-3225. This is a dual core 4 thread processor that uses the Intel HD 4000 graphics. For a boot drive, I'm using an OCZ Agility 3 60GB solid state drive. For the motherboard, I went with a Gigabyte Z77 D3H. This board has a lot of nice features for the price, including a dual UEFI BIOS. For the memory, I'll be using 8GB of Corsair Vengeance low profile memory clocked at 1600MHz. For the power supply, I'll be using a Rosewell Capstone 450 watt power supply, complete with that 80 plus gold certification. As for the test bench, I got this from HighSpeedPC.com, so be sure to check them out. This guy set me back about $90. Now the first thing we're going to do to build this system is crack open the motherboard. So as you can see here, the first thing we get right on top is a user manual and you know some guidebooks that we don't need. We have two blue SATA cables and two black SATA cables, which I thought was a pretty neat addition. We also get the rear I.O. shield that I will not be using for this build. And of course, here's the motherboard itself. This board has a lot of nice features for the price, such as USB 3.0, many PCI options, and four memory slots for a maximum of 32GB of memory. This board also uses the 1155 CPU socket, which is fully Ivy Bridge ready. Installing the motherboard to the test bench is actually very easy. These little white screws act as a support for the motherboard, so we simply put the motherboard over top of them and use the included white nuts to secure it in place. Now that the motherboard has been installed, let's have a look at the Core i3. The 3225 is an Ivy Bridge chip that uses the 1155 socket. After demolishing that factory seal, which always feels so good, the first thing we see is the processor itself. Also in the box is the stock Intel cooler. This cooler is nothing special, but it's all we need for this build as we won't be doing any overclocking and is only a dual core i3. Installing the processor to the motherboard starts with this little latch right here. Simply push it down, slide it out, and pull it up. Once the CPU socket is open, you'll want to take off that CPU socket cover which helps keep dust and dirt and debris out of your CPU socket. Now that the socket is open, simply grab your processor and take it out of the plastic packaging. When you're doing this, be sure that you don't touch the top surface. Looking at the processor, you'll notice two little notches. Those notches correspond to the two notches on the motherboard CPU socket to ensure that you install it correctly. After lining up the notches on the CPU, simply take that lever, fold it down, and you're good to go. Now it's time to install the CPU cooler. You'll notice that the cooler already has thermal paste pre-applied, so there's no need to do this. Simply line up the four holes of the motherboard with the cooler and push down on each of the corners until it snaps into place. Make sure all four are secured in place. Don't forget to take the 3-pin power cable out of the fan blades, as we'll be needing this later. As for the memory, we'll be installing 8GB of DDR3 Vengeance Low Profile Memory. Here's one of the memory modules up close and personal. I always highly recommend Vengeance Memory. To install the memory in your system, you'll want to open the appropriate memory slots. On the memory module itself, you'll notice an off-center notch. This corresponds to the off-center notch on the actual RAM slots. The memory can only be installed one way, so make sure you do it properly to avoid damage to the RAM module. Once you're sure that the memory is facing the right way, simply push directly down on top of the RAM slot until it snaps into place. For the solid state drive, I currently have it mounted on a 3.5 inch bracket and I'm simply going to slide it back on the rails for now. And now I'm going to crack open the power supply. So using my Hackintosh juice knife, let's go ahead and demolish this plastic, just slice and dice. And the first thing we come across in the box is the manual, which I will not be using. Next in the box we have the main power cable for the entire computer. And obviously we have the power supply itself, complete with bubble wrap. Removing the power supply from its packaging, you'll notice that this is a very well built power supply. Here we have the power switch as well as that three prong for the power cable. On the bottom we have a nice big old fan and of course here we have the spaghetti of cables. A little closer up as you can see we have SATA, we have Molex, we have a six or eight pin PCI connector and of course the main 24 pin power connector. Also included are some screws in a psychedelic purple bag. Installing the power supply to the bench is a very easy process as I'm simply just going to lay it right on the bottom there. Next, I'm going to unwrap all of the cables and decide which ones I'm going to need for the build. I'm going to need the 24 pin main connector, the two 4 pin power cables for the processor, and a SATA power for the solid state drive. The first cable I'll be installing is the CPU power cable. That's where we need the two 4 pin connectors. Power cables in hand, I'm simply going to route them to the back of the bench. 
bring it around to the top of the board. And on the connector, make sure you look for the little clip. Make sure the clip is on the same side as a little notch on the socket, and simply push down on both of the 4-pin connectors until they're both snapped into place. The next cable I'll be installing is the 24-pin main power connector. Very much like the CPU power connector, simply find the socket, push down, and it's installed. The last cable from the power supply we need to install is the SATA power connection. The SATA power connection has a little notch on one of the sides. Simply line that up, push it in the connector, and you're good to go. Coming back to the CPU cooler, let's go ahead and plug it in. You'll notice the CPU cooler has a fourth pin for a fan controller, while most case fans only have three pins. To install the cooler, simply find a fan header on your motherboard and plug it in by lining up the grooves. It's also worth mentioning that you can plug a three pin fan into a four pin fan header. Simply line up the groove and you're all set. The last cable I'm going to be needing is a SATA cable for the boot drive. Find the SATA connections on your motherboard and note how some are white and some are blue. The white corresponds to SATA 3, while blue is SATA 2. You'll want to use SATA 3 if you're using a solid state drive. Once you've chosen the appropriate SATA connection, simply line up the notch in the cable and plug it in. Simply do the same on the boot drive end. To keep things nice and neat, I'm going to use a cable tie to tie back all the cables I'm not using. As far as switches go, I have a reset switch, a hard drive LED, a power LED, and a power switch. When installing your front panel switches, look at the layout below the pins. This will tell you what goes where. For example, my power LED goes in the lower right and uses three pins. Much like a fan connection, simply line up the pins and push down. Simply repeat the process for the remaining switches and LEDs until they're all plugged in. And now you've completed the build. I'm going to plug in the power cable, plug in the DVI connection for the display. I'm going to hit that power switch and we're on our way. Sorry for the horrible rhyme. From here, simply install Windows, or if you're making this into a Hackintosh, go ahead and click the annotation you see for part 4 of my Hackintosh from start to finish series. If you like this video or it helped you, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com, and I'll see you guys in my next video.